This is the plaintiff, Diana Clark. She says she sold a pearl necklace to the defendant, and when she got it, she complained about it and stopped her credit card charge. The defendant also claimed she mailed the necklace back. She never received it. Now she's out $936.16, so she's suing. This is the defendant, Melanie. She says the necklace looked much smaller than it did in the pictures, and it was a flimsy little thing, so she returned it. She has the tracking number. It was delivered and signed for, and she's not responsible and owes her nothing. She's accused of changing her mind. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Your Honor. All right. Au auction House Galleries, represented here by Diana Clark. You're the owner. You are suing Melanie for $936.16 that you say you are out as a result of a transaction that went pretty badly. What exactly yes. happened here? Um, I run an, auction, an online auction site where items are consigned to me. Um, everything uh, starts at $1.00. There's no reserves. Uh, my auctions, in order to participate in my auction, the buyers have to agree to my terms, which um, clearly states that all auctions are, things are sold as is, final sale, no returns. We do make an, you know, exceptional efforts to represent everything properly, describe everything properly, photograph everything extensively. This particular item was shown 14 times with rulers, in my hand, hanging on a neck form in every way possible that I could convey to her what the item actually was. It was stamped 14K Italy, as well as being tested for veracity uh, with natural pearls, 24 inches, clear as day what it was. Do we have a picture of the item? Uh, yes, you do. I have it. These are the things I have. Is this the item? That's it, but I mean, there's much better pictures of it. Did you give us those much better pictures? Uh, I don't know if I did or not. I okay, can I see one? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and here's my phone. If you click on the main picture, and then you can cycle through the 14 pictures. And if you look down the page, it will give the verbal description, as well as the terms of the wow, sale. Wow, you do really take the time to show a thousand ways. Yes with the ruler, not with the ruler, in your hand, around the neck, around the mannequin. And please do read down the page, the description and the condition notes. All items are sold, final sale, as is, no returns. Okay, enjoy the gamble and the hunt. Okay, so what happened? So she won the item. She seemed very happy to have won the item. She immediately contacted me and asked me, she told me she was having some issues with her family. Her mom wasn't well. She was running around doing things about getting her mother situated in assistant living, assist, an assisted living situation. Would I mind holding the item for a couple of weeks? And then when she got settled, she would tell me where to send it. I said, that's fine. That's no problem. She already paid for it. She, the yeah. credit card immediately gets charged when the auction ends. Right. Uh, the, the shipping, we charge a $15 shipping fee for jewelry items, regardless of how many they win. So it was a $15 shipping cost for shipping. Uh, I said I was happy to hold the item. I hope your mom's well. A couple of weeks later, she contacted me. Yes, okay, please send the item. She gave me a different address in South Jersey or North Jersey, South Orange to send it to. I shipped the item. Um, after receiving the item, she wrote back to me by text saying, this is the worst thing I've ever bought in my life. I hate it. I don't want it. Um, uh, you have this all in evidence, by the way. Yes. Um, and I basically responded kindly. And I there said, are no returns. Yeah, but I said, I'm sorry that you weren't happy, but we went to great lengths to d depict the item as accurately as possible. It was not misrepresented. She was one of 15 bidders. Uh, you know, she kept upping her bid and upping her bid and upping her bids. She won. I don't know what you were expecting. It was well and fairly represented, as you can see in the above pictures. Your words, enjoy the gamble and the hunt. Only you knew it was a gamble. That's her response. To yes, me. I know. All right, talk to me, Ms. Melanie. Did you know when you were putting a bid and 
buying things at auction, sight unseen with only pictures. Uh, did you know that there were no returns? I didn't know there was any, there was no returns. It's right on no. the website though, that all sales are final. Well, it's I right there, have, it's not hidden or anything, right? I also have a copy of the... It's right, in fact, it's right where it says, enjoy the gamble on the hunt. That's kind of the idea, right? It's a hunt, right. it's a gamble, you, you, it's exciting. You're, you, you might be getting a great price on this old jewelry that, you're, that you fancy, or, you know, I mean, that, that is, you're doing this sight unseen, no returns you're on notice. So when she tells you, you know, there's, I'm sorry you feel that way, no returns, it's right on the website. And by the way, I took pictures with a ruler. She did, right? So what has happened was that I purchased a necklace online. No, I need you to answer my question. Oh, what did she do wrong? There were pictures online that had the ruler next to it so you could see exactly the size it is. It arrived and I was not happy with the necklace. What, but what was different than the pictures? It just seemed really large in the photographs. It was blown up, and then when it arrived, it was like a necklace for a child, like very thin, But very you lose flimsy. the ability to say that when the pictures have a ruler next to them, right? Because they, the pictures had a ruler next to them, right? Right. Okay, so it's telling you exactly the size it is. But in any event, you get it, you don't feel it weighs enough or it doesn't feel substantial, you feel like you've paid too much and you want your money back, and she points out that right on the site it says no returns, and then what do you do? Well, I contacted the auction site that hosted her sale. So I contacted them, they said I had every right to dispute the purchase, I didn't. Okay, first of all, do you have that in writing, what you just said? Like, in other words, you contacted them. I presume you didn't contact them verbally. You contacted them through... No, I contacted them via, via phone. So you have no proof of what you're saying, that they said no, you have every right on a case where it says no returns to... Okay, go on. You I, would have a right if she sends you something that isn't what she advertised. The problem I'm having is how did she falsely advertise it? The pictures were really large. The pictures... First of all, the picture's not larger than your neck. It's not, because the picture's gonna be smaller. So if you're misjudging how big it is, that's why they put the ruler there, so you don't misjudge. But so you ruler... have a feel for it. And her hands are in it. Her hands are in it, really. That's what I always tell somebody, put your hands in the picture, because I can't, ah, uh, you want a ruler? No, I actually want your hands. Because then I've got a sense, spatially, of what I'm looking at. So, and her hands are in it. I mean, she couldn't be more transparent. But in any event, so here's what you do. What you do is you contest the credit card. Your credit it was, card. It came out directly from my bank. I can't. I called the bank, and they told me I have every right to dispute yeah, the you charge. You don't. I decide if you have the right. But in any okay. event, let's see what happens. It was a merchant. Uh, a merchant. Dispute. What? What did you say to them? What? I just told them I was unhappy with, and they they investigated the the dispute. They contacted the merchant, the uh, plaintiff. This is how she did found out. Did they contact you? They contacted you when it was a fait accompli, or they contacted you to get your side? To get my side. And what happened? I told them exactly what I just told you. And then they ruled for her anyway. That's nuts. Not only that, but I had two fifteen dollar uh, fees for two different charges. The shipping charge was a separate dispute, and the necklace itself was a dispute. And it's in there in your evidence. You can see it. Um, they, yeah, they ruled for her. All right. So then, what do you decide once they rule for her? So then, I called her, and um, I said um, to, a vo I said, oh, just send the necklace back. I didn't want any trouble. I was like frustrated and annoyed and I thought it was blatantly wrong but I thought all right just get the necklace back and I'll resell it and that that will just move along so she said she'll send it did back. you tell her to insure it yes I told her to send it insured signature required okay and um, I'm gonna need you to prove that to me prove that I told yeah her that you thought about insurance and told her to send it insured I think we spoke on the phone It's that. always the way, isn't it? There's texts everywhere, but it's always the way when I want something in proof that I can't get it because it was on the phone. Okay. All right, so according to you, you told her to insure it. Right. And according to her, why is she, when, when you ship it back, who pays for that? I pay for the shipping. All right, I and then $100 is always included in insurance. And then what? It's like 82 cents to insure the whole thing? Why didn't you insure the whole thing? I didn't think of that. She never mentioned anything until after when she said she never received it, but I have a sign. Yeah, and I see the text where she says, I certainly hope you insured it fully, didn't you? This like it's the first time it comes up. I, I do see that. Yes. But you didn't insure it fully. No, I didn't. All right, so you ship sign. it, and then according to you, you never get the shipment. I was aware it supposedly arrived at 7 a.m. on the 4th of July, and the courier that delivered it wrote down something on the signature form like, 
COVID dispensation or something like, and just left it, you know, mailboxes in Connecticut. And didn't complete. require, and didn't require a signature, which you mailed it requiring a signature, right? Yes, it didn't uh, say, it's just it's a no thing COVID, I'll see 19, yeah. We need to put the federal government in charge of everything. So All right, so you, so you say return receipt requested so you can prove she got it. Yes. And then you go online because you have a tracking number and it says signed for by, and it has her name. Right? Yes. Except that then she goes, she goes, that didn't happen. I wasn't there. It was the 4th of July. And then she goes to the post office and she gets the document from the post office. And then it has this COVID-19, no signatures. Apparently, the post office will charge you for a return receipt requested. And then instead of getting the signature, they just, ah, this will do. And then according to you, you never got it back. I didn't get home till like three days later, and I never got the package. Just never got it. See, this is interesting because she does what she's supposed to do. We know she mailed it. We know yes, she mailed it. That's for sure. right. That's right. And that's what you told her to do because you just wanted to get this over with. And she mails it. The post office doesn't do what they're paid to do. They're paid to get your signature, and they don't do it. If you had never told her to send it back, if you had just come to court and said, hey, there's no returns, I want my money, you'd be winning, hands down. But instead, you're a nice person, and you tell her, like, listen, just send it back. I'll, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want any more problems. And then she does what she's supposed to do, other than I would have paid the 84 cents to fully insure it. But, you know, but honestly, I, I don't have evidence that you, I don't think either one of you thought there'd be a problem with return receipt requested. Everybody thought it would be fine. Right. She sends it back because they would normally request. She sends it back, so she does what she's supposed to do, and then the post office doesn't do what they're supposed to do. Right. And now you're out. You're out the money, and you're out the item. That's right. Why aren't you suing the post office? Because only the sender can deal with the post office. I tried to deal with the post office. In Only the sender can talk to the post office. No, you can no, sue whoever no, you want. No, no. I went many a time, believe me. They said the only one who has any leg to stand on, any voice in this is the sender. Not me. I'm not allowed. They, yeah, they, they mean in their own internal policies. That's what they mean. They won't entertain me at all. Right, they won't. I, I believe that. I believe mm -hmm. they won't entertain you And at all. also, I mean, you know, she's supposed to pick it up on a certain day. She didn't come. See, what do I do with the what do I do with the fact that you have absolutely no right to have put her in that position to begin with? Exactly. You don't have a right to return that. There's no returns. It's all sales final. It's an auction. You have zero right to return it. Have you talked to the post office and said, hey, what's going on? They said they delivered it. That's all they told me, that they delivered the package. Right, but do you know what I'm telling you about that they didn't actually get her signature? Have you learned that? I didn't, I didn't know. I don't know. They just said it was delivered, and they provided me proof of delivery signature. The, did they provide you with a signature? Well, it's a signature. That's what's on this document here. Is it, it, let me see your document. Thank you. Right. Is her signature on there? That's what she ended up getting from the post office. It says C-19, as in probably COVID-19. Right. And then a bunch of letters and then the address. That's it. When you paid for return receipt requested. And signature required. This, is, uh, this case really bothers me uh, to no end. Listen to me. In the future, when someone does what they can't do, you just sue them for the amount. Because what happens here is we have another contract between the two of you. If you mail it to me, I'll just drop this whole thing. Then she does exactly what she's told, because we know she mailed it. She didn't keep it. She does what she's told, and the culprit here is the United States Postal Service. And I know they won't talk to you because you're not the sender. That doesn't mean you can't sue them, and then they have to talk to a judge. And I know that it may not be worth it for you to sue them, because, you know, what are you going to do? But truthfully here, they were asked to get a signature. They didn't because they decided that COVID on July 4th of 2022 allows them to charge for a signature that they don't get, and then now you're out. I mean, because it's not like this was mailed to you July 4th of 2020. It's mailed to you July 4th of 2022, when I'm going to hazard a guess that that same postal person went to see fireworks in a concert that night. But in July of 2022, the post office allows them to sign for it, which is outrageous. 
Don't charge her for the signature if they're going to do that. And you are the third party beneficiary of that contract. And so I am telling you, you can go to small claims and sue them. I don't think that they'll turn around and say, no, you have to sue us in federal court. I don't think they're going to do. I think maybe then someone will pay attention to you. They're most certainly not going to pay attention to you on a telephone call. But you could go against them because really, it'll be their fault for not getting the signature. But it's very hard for me to look at her and say, you're out the item and you're out $900, lady, because you didn't do what you were supposed to do when I know that she did exactly what you asked her to do. Look, let's just put this behind us and just send me the item. And she did it. She did it. So my verdict in this case, even though it pains me, is for, because I know she did do something she's not supposed to do, which is contested through her credit card company. But my verdict in this case has to be for the defendant. My hands are tied. Oi. Thank you, Your Honor. So even though she didn't want to do it, the judge found for the defendant in this case, and the plaintiff does not get the 900 and some dollars she was seeking. Uh, Ms. Clark, you, you, your case really gave the judge problems. And I'm sure you're probably, you've got problems, too. How do you feel about what happened here in court today? Look, it's over. I'm just exhausted from the experience. The woman did not act with integrity. I did. And unfortunately, I see the judge's point, so I have to accept it. I'm just going to move on. I'm done. You're not going to go and try and file a suit against the post office, no, are you? No, I'm not. I've got a life yeah. to live. All right, that'll wrap it up for this case. From her point of view, let's see what uh, what the defendant has to say. Let's let's hear from her, Melanie. What about what about you? How do you feel about the outcome of the case? I feel great. I'm very happy the judge was able to uh, come to a decision. Do you feel sorry for the plaintiff? No, definitely not. Why not? She did. What did she do that made you so against her? I just feel like maybe she's a scam scam artist. Well, the judge did, really wouldn't agree with you there. All right, well, that'll bring the case to a close. Good luck. You don't have to pay for the item, and uh, that'll do it. You know, Doug, I got to say, this is where COVID mucks things up. I mean, the law has really had to change and bend because of all of the changes as a result of COVID and the precautions that people take. And this case is a good example. But the bottom line is the defendant did precisely what the defendant was supposed to do by entrusting it to the Postal Service, that's why the defendant won. Do you ever consider body language and facial activity to help determine credibility in a case? Yes and no, because uh, when I was a young prosecutor, that was all the vogue where all these studies came out that, you know, that you could read somebody that way. And I, I think that there's some truth to that, but I think that everyone's tell is a different tell. Right. And I think it's much more unique. And I, I think it's, it's, um, it's not quite, not everyone reacts the way you expect them to. And that yeah. doesn't mean that their reaction isn't their genuine reaction. Right. So I think you learn during the course of a lot of uh, testimony in your life that I you know, think that stuff can mislead you as often. Yeah, that's as true too. It could actually lead so. you down a different path that, <clears throat> right. you know.